The plan for the Circle Line was conceived as early as the 1990s. Construction began in 2002. It was an ambitious undertaking that involved thousands of engineers, planners and construction workers. But in the subsequent seven years, the Circle Line proved to be one of the most challenging construction projects undertaken by the LTA. The Indonesian sand ban, a hiccup in granite supply, construction company woes and cost overruns. These were just some of the spanners thrown into the works. But the greatest setback had to be the 2004 collapse of the Nickel Highway construction site, which resulted in the death of four workers. That year, LTA's safety record took a nosedive. After the Nickel Highway incident, the LTA imposed more stringent construction safety requirements. It reviewed all its work on the circle line imbibed with a fresh resolve to ensure that every man was to go home safe every day. Because building a people-centered land transport system was not just about taking care of the needs of commuters, it was also about the safety of its builders. In 2003, the LTA engaged Dupont a world-renowned safety consultant to audit its construction safety. Today, DuPont is conducting its final round of auditing for 2009. And as the results are announced, LTA senior management are heartened to hear that they have been awarded an overall score of 4.07 out of a maximum of 5. LTA has seen its safety score climb steadily from the 2.3 in 2003 and the 3.7 in 2007. It places LTA in the world's top 5 to 10 percent when it comes to safety excellence. I think the Nico Highway did uh, sort of uh, teach us a very, very good lesson. You know, never take for granted that this is something you have done before, so that you always do, do, do well. Because there are always things that can crop up in a construction. I mean, you look around this construction site, you can see many things are moving, you know, cranes, people, you know, traffic. So always be vigilant, whether it is safety, whether it is program, whether it is, you know, public, you know. Building a people-centric land transport system is more than just about getting the public from point A to point B more efficiently. It's also about engaging them constantly, listening to their grouses and getting their feet dirty. From residents to members of parliament, everyone is given the opportunity to visit the Circle Line construction sites. It's not easy construction and uh, especially when there's tunneling works involved. Putting all that into uh, consideration and coming up with the final product, I think they've done an excellent job. In instances where the roads have to be diverted, causing tremendous inconvenience, the LTA staff had to step up their engagement efforts. The construction of the station at Thompson happens at the doorstep of the visually handicapped school. So when the roads had to be diverted, workers were taught how to ensure the visually handicapped are safely navigated to their destination. Similarly, at Dakota Crescent, the road was diverted several times, hence affecting many people. When the road was finally realigned, LTA and the grassroots threw a party to thank the residents for their patience. Starting well, we felt, you know, the inconvenience, but I accept it. Now. If I want the MRT, I have to accept it right around. So in the end, end of it, I enjoy the fruit, isn't it? Simply, a people-centred land transport system is all about making the community feel like it's their project too. And come May 28th, this project will be translated into reality. After seven years, 
the first phase of the circle line, which consists of five stations, Bishan, Marymount, Lorong Chuan, Bartley and Serangoon, is set to be up and running. To date, SMRT has hired about 300 staff to operate the circle line. Doors are closing.